Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a variety of ways to add a background color behind your text in Squarespace. Now, all of the options I'm going to show you today require Squarespace 7.1. If you want to know how to do this in Squarespace 7.0, check out the other video, which I'll link down below, that talks about how to use some simple code to get the background color behind the text effect. But these options I'm going to show you today are so easy and so effective, so let's dive right in. Okay, so like I said in the intro, I'm working on Squarespace 7.1 today, and these options are only available in 7.1. I have three options to show you, but only one of them works in Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine. So I know this can get a little bit confusing. I've linked down below number one, if you're not sure if you're using Squarespace 7.0 or 7.1, how to find that out. And then I've also linked below some resources about Fluid Engine. So Fluid Engine is basically the new version of Squarespace 7.1. It's still 7.1. You can still have both the classic 7.1 editor and Fluid Engine on your site working in unison. And I'm going to show you that now. You'll be able to see it pretty quickly if you're using Fluid Engine or not, because I'll show you the main differences right now as we're going through. But regardless, let's just jump right in. So I've just got this test site that I'm playing with. And I do have Fluid Engine and Classic Editor sections. So you'll see pretty quickly, this is Fluid Engine. It's very fluid. There's a lot of small blocks on the page. You can kind of move things wherever you want to. And then this section directly below it, I'm using a classic editor section. So the big tell with classic editor sections at the moment is that there's a big upgrade button on them because Squarespace is trying to get everyone to move to Fluid Engine. So that's a very quick way to tell if you're using a classic section or a fluid section. But let's start with the two that work in both Fluid Engine and Classic Editor. So we're trying to add color behind text blocks. Originally in Squarespace, this used to actually be really hard and you used to have to code it in, but now they've added a few things that are really gonna help us. So let's add a block to our classic editor section. If you are using Fluid Engine, you can just click add block here. These two options are gonna work in both. So I'm gonna click on a plus and I'm gonna add a text block. And you can see instantly when I add the text block, it opens up the text block settings and asks me if I want to add a background. So that's number one, really simple. Just toggle on background. So I'm going to just click out of these settings and I'll show you how to get back into them if it didn't pop up for you immediately. So this is just a regular text block. You can just edit it just like you would a regular text block. And it's going to add the background behind the whole block. So whether you're in Fluid Engine or Classic Editor, you might want to adjust the size of the block. In Classic Editor, we do that by just adding some spacers. So we can adjust the whole text block, but the background's gonna show behind the text block. Now to get into those settings again, you'll just wanna double click on your text block, or you can click once on your text block and click the edit icon. So with the text box, it's a little bit hard to get into those settings because there's so many different places you can click. When you click on the actual text, it's going to open up your text toolbar. But if you click once sort of near the outside where that little grab hand is, it's going to open up the settings or you can also double click in that same spot. And the only settings for the text block really are background. So this is where you can play around with your background. You can adjust the corner radius, which is really fun. And you can also adjust the padding. So that's gonna be like the space between the edge of the color and your text. Now you might be wondering how to actually edit the color. Unfortunately, there's no color settings in here. I'm hoping that this is something that Squarespace adds. It's definitely something that we've requested, but right now the color is set depending on what colors you have in your section. So your Squarespace page is made out of different sections. So you can see this is one section here with the blue lines. All we have in this section right now is this text block basically. If you click edit section and click on colors, you can choose what color theme you wanna set for your individual section. So if I click on some of these colors, you'll see that all of the colors change. So figure out what color theme you wanna change your section to. I'm just gonna leave mine on the original lightest one and then where we actually edit those color themes is in the site styles. So in your sidebar, you can click on design site styles, or you can click up here in the top right, and that's gonna open up the site styles. Click on colors, 
and then you'll see your color themes here. So this is the same thing themes we were just looking at. And basically this just controls your site wide color themes. So if I go into lightest one and click on the edit icon, and then I'm going to look for something to do with text background. And sometimes you can actually just click on it as well and it will bring it up. So there we go. Text background color. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to click on the little color swatch and I can either choose another color from my existing palette or I can choose something completely custom. So that is the how the color is controlled by the color themes. You can't set a color individually just yet. Hopefully that's something they bring in, but right now you can play around with your color themes to adjust that. But just remember that when you edit a theme, any section around your entire site that is set to the theme you're editing is going to be affected, okay? Because your site styles are site-wide. Okay, let's get out of the site styles and let's show you how to do the next background color behind your text. Now I love having these two options because this version right here is going to give you the color in your whole text block, but the version I'm about to show you just gives you color behind your text. So I'm going to double click on that block again. I'm going to remove the background and start over. This time I'm actually going to click into the text block and highlight the text that I want to add a background color to. Then I'm going to click here on this little symbol with the little scribble underneath the A. And this is a text highlight feature. So there's a ton of different text highlights we can choose from. This is pretty fun and exciting and there's lots of cool things that we can play around with. But for the purpose of this video, we're talking about a background color. So I would click this one here and that's going to give you a background color directly behind just your text. Then luckily for this one, we can actually set any color we want. We can choose from a palette or we can choose something custom. And you can also play around with the thickness. So I can turn it right down or I can turn it right up. At the moment, this is the thickest it's going to get. So it's basically just directly behind your text. You can change the end caps to be round or square, and you can even add an animation, which is really cool as well. So that's the second way of adding a background color to your text. Now, the third way I'm going to show you is only available in Fluid Engine. So I'm going to show you here in this section. Now this is particularly good if you're trying to put a background color behind multiple elements. So you can see in this section I have text and I have a button. And let's just say I want a background color behind that whole thing. If I was to add a background color just behind this text block, like we did the first time, you'll see that the button is excluded from that. Now I could put the button on top but this ends up having a lot of issues because now you're overlapping the button and the text block. And when we start to move the screen, you'll see that eventually the text is going to overlap with the button. That's just inevitable if you have two blocks overlapping like this. So I always recommend avoiding overlapping anything that has text unless it's very intentional. But if this is the text block here with the blue border, then I'm going to want to keep that button in its own area. So you can see now, this is how I really want them to be because if I move the screen now, they're never gonna overlap. They can't possibly overlap because they have their own area in the grid. So this is a big mistake that a lot of people using Fluid Engine use. They overlap things and when it looks good on desktop and they don't think about the fact that when you move the screen size, things are going to actually be overlapping and unreadable. So what you'll want to do in this instance, if you do want the background behind both of the button and the text, first let's just remove the background, go back to where we were, and we're going to add a new block. And this is a new block from Squarespace that I'm obsessed with, and it is so simple but so effective, the shape block. And this is only available in Fluid Engine right now. But it just opens up a world for so many simple and effective designs. So obviously right now this shape block is on top of our text. So we'll want to use this toolbar up here to move it backward. So that's going to move it to the back. And once it's in the back, we can adjust it anywhere we want behind both elements. So maybe I want this whole thing to be a little bit smaller. I'll just drag it in and adjust till I'm happy. So now you can see I have successfully added a background color behind the text and the button. And at the same time, nothing is overlapping. Just pull that in. So if I highlight all of these, you can see the shape is behind both of the elements. 
and the text and the button are in separate grids. There's no overlapping, so they're never going to be overlapped when we adjust the screen size. Everything should scale perfectly and nothing will overlap. So I love the shape block for adding backgrounds behind multiple elements. Now, if you wanna update the color of the shape block, double click on it to open up the settings. You can adjust the corners. You can actually play around with the shape totally. I have a whole nother video on shape blocks, which I'll link below as well. You can even add a drop shadow, which is really fun. And then you can update the color here. So that's it. That's the three ways to add background colors to text blocks in Squarespace 7.1. There's definitely more ways to do it. There's more tricks. There's more things you can add with code, but I think with those three options, you're actually really covered for 99% of the things that you would want when adding a background color behind your text. Now, remember, if you are working on Squarespace 7.0, I do have another tutorial on how to add a little bit of custom code to do this because none of these options are actually available in Squarespace 7.0, which is a bummer, but it isn't that hard if you did want to have a look at that and just use a little bit of code to add a background color to your text block. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe. We put out new videos every week. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.